points of item two on the agenda, on page one, the last of the minutes of the annual meeting held on the 23rd of September 2016. Maybe noted. Agreed. Okay, so item three is declarations of interest by members and officers. None received. Okay, thank you. Item four is questions from members under rule nine, on page seven. None received. Thank you. Item five is questions from members of the public under rule ten, on page nine, and none have been received. So we go on to item six, which is motions proposed by members under rule fifteen, on page eleven. So we go on to item 7 on page 13 of the agenda, and that's the external orders annual letter to members for 15 and 16. Uh, Peter, are you going to open this up and then? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, the authority has an external auditor, Ms. Grant Thornton, and we're required to have an external auditor. Uh, uh, as part of their appointment, they're required to tell you what they've done and what they've found during the year. This is their opportunity. Um, they provided a report at appendix 1 to these papers on pages 19 to 27. Um, and before I hand over to Jackie Bell, I've got Ralph Thornton, who's the uh, engagement lead. Uh, I'd just like to remind members that once again, Ralph Thornton has issued us with an unqualified opinion and a complete uh, value point conclusion. Yeah. 
likely to lead to economies of scale in audit fees because you're going to get larger appointments rather than individual appointments. So one auditor may be approach, uh, appointed for the whole of Merseyside, for example, or the whole of Merseyside and Cheshire if they're very lucky, and therefore they can make economies of scale. But also it saves us from having to go through the expense of making that appointment and for the expense of running an independent audit panel. That would be my recommendation to members. Uh, but it does require members to make a decision on this before I get back to this um, sector-led body and say we wish to opt in. Um, I think that's probably all I need to say on that. Kevin? Yeah,
said about reducing setting costs, and uh, you've just commented on what we've had in the past in terms of any setting up costs, and we just continue the way we're going. Um, and it also says the potential to negotiate low fees, which that word potential these days is very important, especially if it's going to violate LGA. Yeah, I think, I think um, one thing I would try to disabuse all people in the room of is the notion of all the people come down through this. Because uh, uh, I, I asked to make a serious point for once. The audit phase, the audit that Jackie and her firm and all the others who were appointed under the audit, audit Commission's regime have been charging to all of the auditing bodies, not just to us, have been artificially low for the last two or three years because of the rebates coming back from the balances that the Audit Commission held. And so unfortunately, whichever way we go, whether we go with this, which I believe will be the least expensive option, or any of the others, the audit fees are only going to go in one direction, aren't they? Can I just have a comment? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
commenced in 2014, the commission is being underway this year, and it was planned to be completed by the 1st of October, so it's as if the contract itself was in full service from that date. Um, there have been a number of small technical issues that the contractor has faced, which have meant that they haven't been able to achieve that date. So commissioning continues at this moment in time, there's a small delay whilst those issues are being resolved. Um, the impacts of the, the current situation are considered to be uh, not, not expected to be significant in nature, but the rapidly moving situation remains uh, under review, and we will report any significant uh, impacts that may arise as a result of the situation at the meeting. Um, and that really is the, the short summary. Do members have any key questions? Tony? Uh, yes, sure. Obviously, we are concerned you know, that there has been a delay, and as Ian said, we are due to be completed on the 1st of October, and next Thursday, the 1st of December. So it is worrying that you know, we've got this delay. And I'd just like to ask uh, certain questions in relation to the financial aspects of the contract. One of the things that we need to understand as members is that when will we get a date for the completion of the plant when it becomes fully operational? I mean, they say technical issues, but we really need that information. And just to keep maybe like bother us off with technical issues, I don't think it's good enough. So I think that we should have a more detailed response maybe sometime in the future. And the second part of my question is in relation to any financial penalties. If we have to go to uh, other providers to uh, get rid of the uh, household waste that isn't going to the plant, is there any uh, financial penalties for the district? And no further costs or additional costs will be passported back to the district. I mean, the cost should fully uh, fall on CETA and, and the contractors, not on the district. Yes, so I'm happy to, to provide a, 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 a good luck to, uh, to the council on that. In terms of the date for the completion of the plants, uh, the issue that they're facing at the moment, they're keeping us on the and I'd be happy to appraise the councillors and members on uh, the precise details of that. It is a, it, it, quite a complicated issue. as. In terms of building an energy for most facility, uh, they are working as fast as they possibly can to resolve this issue. And I can give a more detailed uh, update on that in due course. In terms of the financial implications and the implications on districts, as you, uh, as you have raised, there should be no implications on districts whatsoever in terms of the movements of waste. Waste will always be delivered to the front of their stations as it is at this moment in time, so there won't be um, any impact on the district themselves. In terms of the financial Itself. Well, there are um, mitigations within the contract itself that do serve to actually protect the authority in that regard. We're looking at those that are not considered to be anything significant at this moment in time um, to the authority, but we will be able to report back to members uh, on that in due course. Yeah, I think uh, the key concern, the second key concern about financial implications, um, members will be aware that there are two phases to the final seats. The commissioning phase and the full operation phase. While the contract is in commissioning, it actually costs the authority slightly less than when it actually goes to full, full operation because they're testing the plants and therefore they don't charge us the full rate for testing. So during the period the commission is extended, we actually save money. So there isn't a cost to the districts of that. If we enter into the full operation and they then can't deal with all our waste through the plant, there are uh, arrangements whereby they will deal with their, uh, the, that waste through alternative delivery and then again there isn't an additional cost to districts. That is their cost that they have at the front. So in terms of additional costs to districts, and uh, to us and therefore to districts, no, there aren't any additional costs from this slight delay. Another, um, uh, there is another uh, part of this picture which is you're asked to delegate authority to me to run a procurement for an interim landfill contract or whatever, whatever treatment means we can find if needed. Obviously we're working very hard to make sure that it's not needed. Uh, it is just a contingency arrangement and then we will, we would, if we get to that point, we will brief members on where, how the finances work out on that as well. But again, we're expected to be kept holders and authority and not to suffer financial penalties and therefore not to pass 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, members will be aware that the authority now has a corporate planning process which underpins our work and shapes decision making for the authority. And each year, as part of that process, uh, we ask members to consider their views on the corporate planning priorities so that we can inform the planning process, which then informs the budget, which then informs the service delivery plans to ensure that the plan is actually delivered. So it's, it's one of those circular diagrams if you think about it today. Um, and the planning process is outlined in a slightly more complicated uh, diagram on page 72 of uh, this report. Uh, I don't propose taking you through it, although if anybody wants to, so I'm happy to take you through that outside the room. Um, the key elements of the corporate plan are set out on page 73, at the top of page 73, and, and include deliverability, which is about the contracts, sustainability, which is about uh, our environment and accountability, which is about when you're talking to members and getting permission from members to do things and then being accountable to the public. Um, good governance. Uh, the themes uh, of deliverability, sustainability and accountability are reflected in the corporate plan, which is attached as appendix one to the report. And at this stage, we consider that that plan and its themes remain appropriate for delivery services into 2017-18 and therefore don't propose making any significant changes to for members' information, also attached is the Corporate Risk Register, which has been developed as a working document for uh, your executive management team to assess the key risks to the authority of not delivering on its objectives and the mitigations that have been put in place or can be put in place to provide greater, greater assurance uh, to program management and members that we are more likely to achieve uh, our, our objectives. As I say, it's a working document and, and reflects risks and new risks including financial pressure that the authority faces over the next year and for example changes in health and safety arrangements. Uh, it demonstrates how the authority's procedures are managed to give members greater assurance that the corporate plan will be achieved. Um, I could plan on for a long time but I <coughs> suppose to members if that's okay. That's being said. Any questions? If not colleagues can we please do a presentation on page 69? Item 12 on page 81 and it's the Community Fund 2017-18. Carl, you can take us through that one. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, members will be aware we have a very successful Community Fund for several years. It's hugely oversubscribed every year, unfortunately. We can't um, please all the people all the time. Um, this report is about next year's fund. Um, the good news is that we write to the earlier every year and ask them for a bigger contribution than this year. They've increased their contribution by £5,000 to £15,000. So I'm very pleased to be able to tell members we've now got a fund of £115,000, 15 of that coming from the earlier. Um, the report discusses a number of options for you at uh, paragraph 3 on page 85. The recommendation is for the status quo, i.e. the scheme remains in policy terms exactly as it was last year in terms of the split, one per district, plus the rest of the Merseyside White schemes. It's just a slightly bigger number, 115,000 that's divided that way. Um, there is, however, a slight change to, and you'll notice from the recommendations, the members are asked to delegate powers for me to agree in consultation with the chairperson, approval of the final awards. Under the previous year's scheme, the final awards had to, be, had to come back to you. But to be, to, be, to be honest, members were not really in a position Having, having officers having done the evaluations, unless they knew there was something very wrong with an organisation, to to um, change that order. So what I suggested in the report is that I would consult with members before making that delegated decision, just in case there was something any members knew that I didn't know about organisation, <coughs> but subject to no adverse comments coming back from members, I would then just make the decision in consultation with the chairperson. What that en enables us to do is allow the money to go out the door earlier for the projects to actually achieve a full year's end. Because what happens is that there's a delay in them starting, then they can't fulfill the project objectives and they don't, they, they're underachieving their own objectives. Now we want to give them every opportunity as community organisations to deliver the good services that they indeed do deliver. So the idea is to bring forward their ability to get on with it. And Chair, I haven't said anything.
Certainly, Chair, I'll circulate it to all members. So... Uh... 